first learned that there were differences between the expectations of girls and boys when I got to skip piano lessons. I always found piano lessons so tedious, so I asked my dad if I could skip for the day. My brother, Eric, complained that if he had to go, I had to go too. But then my dad said, Audrey can stay. Girls suck. I didn't argue that time because I got to skip lessons, but it always hung in the back of my mind that my father thought less of me than my brother because I was a girl. And as a child, I'm sure my family kept mostly gender neutral to me and my siblings, but maybe I just never noticed the difference. And after that day, I started to notice the little things that my father said to me that he obviously wouldn't say to my brother. For example, he touched my arm and say that my skin should be as smooth as my mother's. My mother kept her skin healthy by applying at least five different products, weekly, daily, something. And both my brother and I agreed that the lotion that my mother slathered felt really disgusting, like mush. And when I asked my father why it mattered that my skin wasn't smooth, he said that I needed it or else boys wouldn't like me. And though my dad was more overt about it, my mom never really shied away from gender expectations either. She always asked me to wear skirts more often and preferred to direct me towards the dress section whenever we went shopping. Most of the time, both of us just left the store empty handed. One particular day, we went shopping in Italy and found a store for formal wear that we'd need later on. I gravitated towards the tuxedos while my mother found dresses on the other side. And when I presented my choices to her, she immediately made so many excuses. Those clothes are too old for you. The pants are too tight. The jacket doesn't look nice. And I told her that I did want the suit regardless. So she insisted that I at least try dresses too. But after many rounds of changing in the dressing room and getting handed another dress, both of us left the store with three dresses for me and zero tuxedos. And when we left the store, I started arguing with my mother in front of the front door. Of all the new dresses I now had, only one was of my own choice. She had slipped the other two in the shopping bag while I wasn't looking. And I told her to return the dresses, but she said that they look nice on me, I just couldn't see it. My mom said that I had to dress my age. Since I was still young, I couldn't wear stuffy old tuxedos, but sundresses that showed a little bit more skin. And then I reminded her that she put that pretty, but leave it revealing, dress back on the shit rack. And as I deflected each argument she presented, my, my mother finally said, Audrey, do you really want to know? Yeah. She didn't break eye contact. Because suits make you look like a lesbian. And my jaw dropped. I said, that's the stupidest re reason I have ever heard. But she ignored me and walked away from the store. And because we were both overseas, I had to follow her or else I'd get lost. I knew my mother always preferred me to wear more feminine clothing, but this was the first time she specifically told me not to dress like a boy. And ever since that date, my mother dropped the subtleties completely and tried to shove more dresses and form-fitting shirts at me. And no matter how much I complained that those SAS uniform shirt hand-me-downs hand that belonged to my sister, who was a good 10 cm shorter than I was, clung too tight, too small, might have shown my belly button, my mom said, those shirts are so much better because they made me look like a girl. And why did I have to wear dresses? Did the presence of tuxedo suddenly signal homosexual transgender girl? Because if that's the case, then approximately one third of the girls who did senior capsule project were raging homosexuals, which is statistically improbable, not to mention ultimately harmless. I wonder what about gays freaking my mother out so much that re she refused to let me wear suits in the first place. And although I could list a few more events and examples that showcased how my parents thought about girls' gender roles, it would be sexist to ignore my brother's end of the treatment. While my father insisted I should be a little bit more passive, both my parents pushed Eric into doing more, into becoming more active. And Eric, though sportsy and outgoing when he needed to be, was a naturally introverted person, preferring to spend his hours in the room. Mother always insisted that Eric do more activities, carry more baggage. She'd barge into his room every day to tell him to get out more. And between the time after graduation and the beginning of national service, Eric had a lot of free time. Naturally, the next thing to do was to pack him off to China. They argued every day, in the car, at the dinner table, by his room's doorstep. 
Mother insisted that Eric had to get his butt out of the room to do proactive things, while Eric argued that he didn't even know the language, let alone wanted to be there. For the longest time, those two fought so often to the point where dinner would not go by without either bursting into shots. And eventually, Eric did yield to my mother's request, and he went to China's for China for two months. Though he had many misgivings, he enjoyed his time learning martial arts in Shufu. However, the very day he came back, my mother asked, What are you going to do now? Within the week, Eric started to learn programming by himself, taking driving lessons from our father, and then going to the gym on the days he wasn't sore. But that wasn't enough, not for my mother. She insisted that he also find a part-time job. And the arguments continued, as if Eric never went to China at all. And this story seems like the typical tiger mom story, except my mom is far from a tiger mom, at least to me. Eric and I both spend approximately the same amount of time in our respective rooms, but my mother preferred to barge into his room to nag him, though his room was on a completely separate floor, while mine was directly opposite of hers. Whenever he complained, my parents would pull the, oh, Audrey's writing a novel, or Audrey's doing art card. <laughs> But all of us knew that my parents didn't care for arts at all. One day, after my, one, my mother once again urged him to be more active, Eric asked, why do you always nag me more? And she said, Eric, society will expect so much more of you because you're a guy. You can be a house husband or have your girlfriend drive you around places if you want, but do you really want that? After that, Eric silenced his and the gendered stereotypes that also followed us into other small things, such as our cleanliness habits. Eric took showers twice a day, washed his hands before and after meals, and never used anything but his utensils to touch food. Well, I could say, sorry, I've gone days without showering and sometimes with my laptop directly after touching my food. However, whenever our not direct relatives come to visit, they often assume that Eric is the disgusting sibling because he's the boy. And it's only after they see both of our habits that they know I'm the grosser person. And this assumption had me wondering whether girls were just assumed to be the gender with more self-control. Most of the time, I could ignore the sexist comments because my parents weren't too outspoken about them. However, both of these sentiments rear their ugly heads with a simple task of opening a box. I was surfing through the internet upstairs in my room when I heard Eric and my father shouting at each other, Eric, this is a man's job. If this is a man's job, then why do you do it? And then why don't you do it? Eric said. The noise irritated me so much that I went downstairs to see my father trying to push a flathead screwdriver and a hammer to Eric while a large box, brown box sat on the side. It was a box from my mother's mosaic art piece from Italy. And unlike most of the other boxes I saw, the wooden box was nailed shut. Hey dad, can I try opening this box? I asked. This is a man's job, you're a girl, my father said. And I asked again, so he handed me the tools anyways. I wonder now if he was trying to prove to me that I couldn't do it, in hindsight. I poked around the box with a screwdriver for a bit, looking for places where I could insert it. And while doing so, I naively said, I wish we could just smash the box open. My father laughed at me. He said, Audrey, this is why you can't do it. This is a man's job. Give me the tools. This is a man's job was like his battle cry or something. How hard could opening a box be? And so I ignored my father and found a spot in the box where the top jutted over the bottom. Then I pried it open. I stared at my father, daring him to repeat how I couldn't do it. My father silenced his teasing and instead turned to Eric and started complaining about how he couldn't do a job that I, a girl, could. Well, I suppose it was foolish to assume that his views would completely spin because of one incident, but I hope that my father would be less quick to speak up against my capabilities just because I'm a girl. And these issues don't overtake my life, but they did come in large, in large enough doses that I worry about how the outside world will treat me. Will I be told not to wear tuxedos by people for femininity's sake? Will I be told that I could never achieve certain things because I was a girl? 
perhaps in our world that's moving forward, these problems and assumptions will even time. But for today, I know that being a girl does make a difference to other people.